Hi everyone, welcome to the frequency domain. In this video, we are going to review a design example of a fifth order Chebyshev low pass filter with a step impedance implementation. As the title suggests, we are going to design a microwave strip microwave filter. So, for those who are not really familiar with microwave filters, we suggest to review some basic concepts before proceeding. Okay, what we are going to cover are where to start filter properties, introducing a covalent lump element circuit model, and finally a step impedance implementation. So where to start? In order to design a filter, we can consider three general steps. The first is to know what are the properties of your filter. These are generally cutoff frequency, passband repel, and stop band attenuation. When you answer to these questions, you can form a lumped element circuit model for your filter. These forms are predefined and you can find them in any electronic textbook. The order of this circuit is defined over step 1. Our final job is to turn this circuit into a physical layout, which we first need to pick a substrate and use some equations based on the implementation type we choose. For step 1, let's consider a low pass filter with cutoff frequency of 10 GHz. Cutoff frequency is normally defined when S12 of the filter drops by 3 dB. We also want to have a filter with low ripple in its pass band, so 0.1 dB is a good number for that purpose. The last piece of information we need is attenuation at the stop band. We can consider a single frequency, so let's say 30 dB attenuation at 20 GHz. Now we are ready to jump into the next step. Since we are designing a Chebyshev filter, we can use this equation to reach the order of our filter. We can find this equation in Mr. Hang and Mr. Lancaster book. So if we put the information in step 1 in this equation, we come up with the number of 4.58, which we should round it up to 5. Now order of our filter is set to 5. A fifth order filter means that the total number of capacitors and inductors of the circuit are equal to 5. As you can see, there are two types of LAM element circuit models for Chebyshev filters, and you can use either of them. If you consider both circuits at DC frequency, you can find a short circuit pass between input and output, and if you set the frequency to infinity, this pass is gone. So let's pick the second circuit. The value of these elements is something that we are getting in the next slide. You can see that there is a table for filter designing, and you should know that these tables are provided for a system with a specific characteristic impedance. If you design a filter for a 30 ohm or 75 ohm system, you should look for a proper table. Here we are about to design a filter in a 50 ohm system. So for a fifth order low pass Chebyshev filter, these are the element values. Now it's time to transfer our schematic circuit into a physical layout. In a step impedance filter, a low impedance line translates into a capacitor and a high impedance line to an inductor. That's why sometimes we call this filter as high low impedance filter. But how high and how low? At first, the low value should be lower than our system impedance. And similarly, the high value should be higher than the system impedance. As the ratio of the high and low impedances are increased, we are going to have a better filter. And by better filter, I mean better inductor, better capacitor, and finally better frequency response. Generally, beside of substrate effects that we are going to talk about them in few seconds, in low impedance lines, you are limited by consuming area. That's because as you lower the impedance of a line, width of the line increases. In contrast, for high impedance lines, it's the PCB fabrication process that's going to prevent you from getting higher impedances. So let's see what does it mean when you're working with a substrate. Picking a substrate itself is a really interesting and challenging issue that one day we are going to have a video about it. But for now, let's consider a RO4003C from Rogers Corporation with thickness of 0.508 mm. So instead of choosing impedances, we are going to use an impedance calculator like something I have in here from ADS software and insert our substrate information into it. For high impedance line, normally a line with the width of 0.2 mm is something that every PCB company can provide. So in the calculator, I'm looking for impedance of a line with the width of 0.2 mm. And it turns out to be equivalent to almost 110 ohms. 
for low impedance line what I'm thinking is that I don't want to have a line with the width of more than four millimeters of course you can have different thinking based on your design so the equivalent impedance is going to be 20 ohms now we have our high and low value impedances and their equivalent widths another useful information we need from this step is the wavelengths corresponding to the high and low impedances you can calculate wavelengths over this equation and you can find the effective relative electrical constant in the calculator something you have to remember in this step is that we do all these calculations at the cutoff frequency so here we are and in few seconds we are going to finish designing our first filter together you may be familiar with the shape of a step impedance filter so as you can see we have already set the widths of the lines and we just need to know the lengths so for the lengths you can easily use the equations provided in mr poser book or any other microwave book and as you can see corresponding lengths for a capacitor comes from different equation than an inductor for the first few tries you may find the calculations a little bit confusing but it gets better as you use them more of course if you like you can even use a computer program like MATLAB to do the calculations so all the information we need are listed in the table and our work in here now is done in our next video we are going to verify our design by simulating it in a microwave simulator software Thank you all for watching this video, we are hoping you find the video useful and we are planning to produce bunch of videos like this about microwave elements and also how to simulate them in different softwares like ADS, CSC and HFSS. So we are so appreciated if you share your thoughts about the video in the comment section and of course you can like and subscribe us for more videos.